Hey, it's time for Dreamcatcher, the program where you can find peace through understanding your dreams and visions. I'm your host, Robin Hardin, and my studio guest today, Jenna, had a vision of heaven, and through that vision, she learned her purpose here on earth. And since the suicide of her father years ago, she's been haunted by demons in her dreams. And she asked me, are all dreams that have demons in them necessarily from the devil? We'll answer that question, but first, here's a dream selfie sent in by Patty. I was on an interstate highway on a long journey. It was very sunny out. Both sides of the road were lined with beautiful green trees. Um, and there was like a pull-off area, and I, I pulled over in my car. And then it wouldn't run. There was another car there then, suddenly. It was full of people, young, like young people in their 20s and stuff. It was packed. The car was packed. And they all said to me, um, now let me get this right. You just buried your brother yesterday. That's what this carload of people said to me. You just buried your brother yesterday. And I started running down the interstate. I was running, running, running out on this interstate. There wasn't a single other car anywhere. Just this pull-off area with the car full of people that said that to me. You just buried your brother yesterday. So then my car, I think, wouldn't run. I don't know why I pulled it off, but I'm running now on the interstate, running and running, and I'm exhausted, and I'm so tired, and I know that I don't have strength um, to keep going. Um, I, re I remembered then in the dream like that I had left some stuff, my stuff, back at the car, but I knew, I knew I didn't have strength to go back and get it, and then suddenly I just rose up and started flying in the same direction, down the interstate with the sun and the green trees. My car was behind me and I just kept flying. Patty, there's a lot going on in this dream. First of all, you're just going through life. On the interstate, it's sunny, it's lined with trees. This is a good day. And then you pull over and rest and your car doesn't start. We had to be very careful as believers. We do need to rest, God rested. But we need to be careful that we don't pull over when we're going in a direction the Lord wants us. You were going the way he wanted you, and then something has happened that has made you pull over. In the dream, you had buried a brother. So this is representing grief of some kind. It doesn't even necessarily have to be death. It can be the, the end of a friendship. It could be someone moving away. It could just be the Lord asking you to leave someone out of your life that's been in your life for a season, perhaps. And so this is showing things were good and then, and then something has happened that has kind of brought you down. These young people come by and they'll speak in prophetically to you. They know what has happened, but it's too tender right now and you don't even want to hear the truth. So examine what's going on in your life right now or perhaps something that's coming in the very near future. When you hear the truth, don't be afraid of it, don't run from it. But even though you did, you still continued going in the right direction. You didn't turn around and go back, you're going in the direction the Lord has for you. And as you persevered, as you endured, the Lord lifted you as eagles, wings. He put that wind under your wings and He, re he renewed you, He restored you. The scripture comes to mind that you will walk and not be weary, you will run and not faint, that he will renew your strength like the eagles. So whatever you're going through, whatever has caused you to pull over and to slow down, whether it's grief, whether it's maybe just exhaustion. In the dream you were exhausted. Maybe you just worked and worked toward a goal that hasn't happened as quickly as you think it should. Get back up. 
endure, run in the same direction, and God will lift you. This is not as bad of a dream as it may feel like. God sees you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what that was that caused you to pull over, but he's going to lift you up, Patty. Thanks for sharing this. I'm here with my guest, Jenna, and she's got some dreams she wants to share. Let's see what the Lord is saying to her. So I had a more pleasant dream <laughs> one night. Um, I was on top of some kind of mountain, but there was a city on this mountain, and it was like, it was beautiful. It was, it was so beautiful. And I almost thought maybe it was like a glimpse of heaven, like in the inside of like the kingdom, like a new Jerusalem, because that's kind of what the buildings kind of reminded me of, like the white, pretty, and they were just, and they were bright and they were glowing and they were so beautiful. And I was with someone, but I don't remember who or exactly what they said, but I know that they were kind of like being my tour guide almost. And he was, and he brought me to my house, my house, almost like it was my house. And, and he's like, you can look, but you can't go in yet. Wow. You can look, but you can't go in. And which was, a, it was beautiful. It was like, it was just, I'm flowers and plants I've never seen before, but they were just so beautiful. And there were people there that I wouldn't expect to be there yeah. that were getting along and it was like unity and it was so beautiful. And then it, my dream changed a little bit and I had talked to someone and he's like, basically, you have to go back, but I need to tell you something before, before you leave. There's going to be a guy and you're going to meet him and his name is Trey. Trey is going to get in a car wreck with someone else and the other passenger is going to die and go through the windshield. And he is going to spend the rest of his life blaming himself and I need you to help Trey when you meet Trey. And I woke up. Have you met Trey yet? I have not met Trey yet, but I am waiting for the day that somebody tells him their name is Trey and I'm going to fall out in the middle of the floor because I don't know. I was like, is that just a dream or is that, mm -hmm. is that? No, I'm not even sure it was a dream. I think it was an experience. Oh. I think you went to the third heaven. Paul talks about someone. He doesn't say it's him, but I believe it was him that he knows of a man who went to the third heaven. I believe you went to the third heaven. I think you saw heaven. And we know that our days are numbered. God knows the beginning from the end. We also know that there was a call in our life before we were formed in our mother's womb. We know this. That's what the mm -hmm. Word says. And I think He's showing you it's a don't give up kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Whenever you get discouraged and, and you know, why am I even here? That's why. Mm -hmm. and, and this is your reward. But before this, this is what's going to happen. And that was... You know, that was so specific. Mm -hmm. Someone named Trey and yeah. someone in an accident. And I, I would take that. I don't think there's any symbols in that dream. I think that is what it is. Yeah. I think you had a tour of heaven with your heavenly father or an angel yeah. uh, from, from heaven. And he even showed you your house. This is yours. But you have a work to do. Yeah. And the reason you would have something like that is most likely... There will be a time, if and maybe already has been, when you're like, why am I even here? Mm -hmm. What am I even doing here? Mm -hmm. And I know that you shared with me about your father had committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times in a family, when one person commits suicide, the other people do as well. Mm -hmm. And if there was ever a dark place in your life, past or future, where you just think, I'm, I'm just going to... It worked for him, you know, and mm -hmm. we know that's the enemy. But if you ever get to that place, mm -hmm. you have this, this visitation. I don't think it was a dream. Mm -hmm. This visitation to say, this is your reward. Mm -hmm. And if you, you don't want to do anything to stop this from happening because yeah. you don't want Trey going through what he's going through. Yeah. You're the one that is set to tell Trey that this is what's going on. I'm going to meet Trey and I'm going to be like, um, Lord, is this the one? I'm not really sure what, like, what would you even do in that experience when you meet that person? But I wish I, I wish I had a picture of it. Like I, it was yeah, so, yeah. it was so beautiful. It was the yeah. most beautiful. It was like seeing one of those beautiful Jerusalem cities with the, you know, the white brick, like the, you know, I'm talking about the, uh -huh. well, I don't know what you call that, but yeah, the white brick. They, 
And but it was like each building like that. It was just glowing, and it was it was beautiful. But they wouldn't let me go inside my house. I could see it, but I couldn't yeah. go in. Wow, that is so awesome. <laughs> People have near death experiences, but you you weren't in trauma. You just I believe the Lord visited you. Yeah. And showed you this. And he, if he does that in the in the word, he can do it today. If he did that for Paul or this man that Paul's talking about, he mm -hmm. can do it to us. And and I believe that's what happened. Yeah. How awesome is that? Of course, everyone you meet with the name of Trey, you're going to be worried about now. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to test the spirits on that yeah. one. I met a lady and she anointed my shoulder and prayed with me. And I went to the orthopedic surgeon and, and, and I didn't have to have surgery. Joseph Storehouse provides nourishment of body and soul to families in need. They accomplish this miracle each day with God's blessings and the loving hearts of our community. I just praise the Lord and thank Him so much. And I was looking for her today because I want to anoint me again. Will you be God's hands? Your love offering to Joseph Storehouse will feed many families. I have several experiences where I've dreamed a lot about demon. I might be in just a place and there's a demon and I'm trying to cast a demon out and shared one dream with you where it was someone that I loved. It was, it was that same person. Um, it was actually kind of scary because it brought me back to that same house, that right. traumatic place in my childhood. Right. And I come down the stairs and it's black and I'm looking for this person and I'm saying their name over and over again and I can't, I can't, I'm trying to yell but I can't. Mm -hmm. It won't come out loud and, but it won't, it just won't come out. Mm -hmm. And then they come in and I'm like, I'm, I'm screaming for you, I'm li been looking for you and I hear someone in the bathroom behind me and I realize that the real person's in the bathroom, that whoever this is in front of me right. is not the same person. Right. And they grab hold of my throat and their eyes turned black and I woke up because I just, I think I just got so terrified mm -hmm. that I woke up and it was almost like I could feel it. Right. And then I woke up, I'm right. like, okay, that was kind of, and the, the ironic part about that dream is, is that happened after a service. Um, we had a service and Pastor Johan talked about how forgiveness is not a shameful thing right. that it is actually a beautiful thing because that's where we meet god's redemption mm. i had realized that um, there were some things in my life that i needed to get rid of and mm -hmm. so i went up there and i felt like i had taken a step forward and so i almost felt like that whatever demonic thing that was trying to oppress me in that area mm -hmm. was mad that i got rid of them that day mm -hmm. and they were trying to mm -hmm. retaliate against me in my dream that could very well be. And, and also, it's taking you back to that house where your father committed suicide. Mm -hmm. There was a spirit of death there. Mm -hmm. That spirit of death is what caused your father to do this, or mm -hmm. a spirit of shame. And it's all the same nasty mm -hmm. demon that does that. This demonic uh, attack mm -hmm. started in that house back then. And it may be that you need to um, take control over that. To forgive someone frees the one who's wounded. And mm -hmm. um, I believe the Lord has shown you that demonic spirit that was there that, that caused your father to be so hopeless. Uh, we, we know that he, he had addiction problems. Yeah. You know, that's demonic that mm -hmm. comes in and takes your identity in Christ away to where you think you are an addict. I have to have this. Mm -hmm. Those are all demonic forces that were in that house that have followed you. And is it normal for people to have dreams about demons and casting them out? I believe that God wants you to, first of all, make sure that you have none of that demonic um, leftover. I don't know enough about it to even use the right terms, but I know that the enemy is real, and I know that he oppresses people, and I know he, he attacks mm -hmm. believers. And if he is hanging on with unforgiveness or blame or shame because um, all of that would be very easy to do when a, with a father who commits suicide um, that you need to free yourself of it first which mm -hmm. it sounds like you did in that service mm -hmm. but then once you're free from it 
that's a gift that you have. Mm -hmm. You can now give that gift to someone else. Mm -hmm. So now you can go and talk to other young women that have shame issues because a loved one has committed suicide or, or someone who is considering suicide because you've dealt with that spirit. Not, it wasn't in you, but it was at least affecting your father. So you've dealt with the spirit of death. You've dealt with the spirit of suicide. This is demonic. You have mm -hmm. dealt with the spirit of unforgiveness and shame because of what someone else did. Mm -hmm. And so you can help cast that out of them. So that's absolutely part of what he wants you to do. And when you get to that place where you are free and you know that you know that you're free, then you can use that experience to help free others. And yeah. that's why you're having that dream. No, not everyone has dreams that they're casting demons out of people. I know that there's a lot of people who have that I've spoken to that have had dreams about demons and it's one of the reasons why they're afraid right. to share their dreams yes. because they yes. think there's something wrong with them. Yes. And I think that that would be helpful for the viewers to know that yes. you're not the only one that has dreams yes. about demons. Yes. So. Anything that God does, the devil counterfeits and he can show up in your dreams just like God can. It's been my experience that if, if you were just terrified in a dream, it's usually not from the Lord. It's usually the enemy terrifying you. Mm -hmm. And the Lord can take that and, and take what the enemy means for evil. He will work for good. But typically God's dreams don't terrify us. There's just a different feeling about a dream that's from the Lord or from the enemy, like a night terror. You hear people that have night terrors and you can't wake them up. That is not the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's the enemy that's come in and is doing that to them. So and then sometimes you just ate too much pizza, and so you have to know <laughs> which it is. So I get, you know, I get that. Too much processed food. food or something. And usually if you remember the dream for any length of time, it's either from the Lord or it's from the enemy because it's, it's not just a fleeting thing. It's in your spirit, and that's how you know. I come to Love's Way Church not because the gospel is not being preached to other churches, but because that I have found that they truly have a heart after God, a heart of compassion. The Bible says that though there be 10,000 instructors in Christ, there are yet not many fathers. And I truly believe that there are pastors and teachers, but there is also a compassionate heart of God that can't be matched at any other place that I've found other than this place, Love's Way. Join Pastor Johan at Love's Way Church, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. I realized that that God likes to warn me sometimes mm -hmm. in dreams. I had one dream where I knew that, well, I didn't know at the time, but after I realized that he warned me about it in advance. Yes. Um, we had a situation go on at a, a church building, and um, a few of us were having to go to a private meeting about the situation. Mm -hmm. And before, I was really, really... I was on high anxiety yeah. over this meeting because I had never been in anything official like this before. Yeah. Um, you know, not been through a lot of church political things. Yeah. This was not for me. Like, yes. you know, so I, you know, I prayed to God. Not you what know. you signed up for, as they say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I prayed and prayed and I, you know, I, I kept, you know, God, if this is not what you want me to do, mm -hmm. if you don't want me mm -hmm. to fight this, please let me know, mm -hmm. pull me out of this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just, because I was just trying to go off of what the Spirit was telling right. me was right and what was right. wrong. And at that time, I felt like it was wrong and I wanted to fight for it. Mm -hmm. And so I had a dream the night before this meeting and I was in a courtroom. And the courtroom was really tall. Like, the, you know how um, the judge What's the seat that the judge sits in? Uh -huh. It was like that, but it was really tall, Real high, yeah. really uh -huh. high, almost higher than me. Mm -hmm. um, and there were people, like men in it. There were several of them. And these people, um, I got a feeling were friends with this person that um, I was kind of going against. Then they were scolding me and they were being really cruel to me and I could tell that it was almost because they were in kind of cahoots with this person mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was the dream. And then the next day I went to this meeting. It went awful, it was not fun. Come yeah. to find out that one of these people were actually friends with this person 
and I had told a friend of mine and about the dream before we went to the meeting because I was like, I, I don't know about this. I said, this is not, this is not good. I, I'm really scared because mm -hmm. I had a dream last night and it just makes me feel, mm -hmm. and I'm, I, I don't feel good about this. She's like, it's okay, you know, well, whatever happens, you know, we're here together, we'll get through this, it'll be fine. Then we leave and she's, and then later on she said, do you realize that that dream that you told me about is almost exactly what happened? And he, she said, maybe God was trying to warn you. Mm -hmm. when, when God speaks to you in a dream, He is spirit, and He's talking to your spirit. He's mm -hmm. not talking to your brain. Mm -hmm. He's talking to your spirit. So He warned your spirit so that when it happened, your brain may have been like, oh, I knew it, but your spirit knew it. Mm -hmm. So your spirit was already prepared for it because mm -hmm. he had already gone through it before you. They were up high because that's to intimidate you. That's authority. That's the principalities of the, of the air and, mm -hmm. and the enemy. And, and it was that they were the judge that, you know, you weren't in court, but it might as well be in those kind of meetings. It feels yeah. the same. Um, there's a scripture, I think it's in Luke, that says when you are called before the court, not to worry about what you're going to say because God will give you the words that you, to, that you will need. He did that in a dream with you. He, no, he told you this was what was going to happen, but you still stood up for what was right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what's right is not the easy mm -hmm. thing to do. But whenever you have a dream, your brain doesn't always know what the situation is, but your spirit does. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing today, getting your interpretation, is telling your brain what your spirit already knows. Mm -hmm. So when you hear it, even though it may be nothing what you expected, when you hear it, it should go, oh yeah, that makes sense. Because we're just connecting the brain with the spirit, is all I do. Well see, and I love that because I prayed, I asked God, is if, if I'm wrong, tell me, you yes. know, convict me. Yes. So in other words, that dream was him trying to confirm you're yes. doing the right you're thing. Doing the right you, thing. This, is, this is what you think it is. Even you know? if the results aren't what you want. And the results were not what we wanted. <laughs> it was awful. Yes. It was it felt it but you know what? A lot of good things came out of that. Mm -hmm. You know, the scripture says that what was intended for yes. evil was made good. And what was intended for evil was made good. good. Amen. Every person in that room that had to witness that and were tore apart spiritually, mm -hmm. I would say some people spiritually crush you. Right. So there were right. some people that were very spiritually crushed, but we were so tight knit of a group and so strong, I feel like in the Lord, that we were able to endure that yes. for other things that were to come. A lot of us in that room were younger, like yeah. we were, you know, we're only yeah. in our 20s. Yeah. And as a kind of, I would say, kind of baby Christians, mm -hmm. you know, we don't mm -hmm. understand we're trying to do what's right. Mm -hmm. We haven't had a lot of life experience. And right. so me and a good friend of mine sat in a hammock and we read the Bible trying to comprehend what had happened. Right. Why were we treated that way yeah. with people that we thought we could trust, you mm -hmm. know, things like that. And we read Psalms that was talking about that you know, vengeance is mine. Yeah. I'm going to take care of this for you. Right. You don't have to worry about right. this. And he did take care yes, of it. Amen. So. I used to work at Dunkin' Donuts. And so in the dream, I was put at Dunkin' Donuts and there was a, like a shift leader or a boss but I didn't know this person. I've never seen them before. But I remember this person was like, almost being kind of rude or condescending towards me with their authority and I didn't really understand why they were treating me that way so I kind of like questioned them a little bit but um, that was about it and then I was leaving I was leaving work and I went out the back door well when I opened the back door I realized that there's there's shadowy things on the ground and I was like what are these things and the more I looked closer there were snakes this mm -hmm. whole building was surrounded by snakes. Mm -hmm. There were small ones, there were big ones, they were all over the place. And it was almost like the snakes were affecting the inside of this building and mm -hmm. these people in this building. And my mother, I guess, was there to come pick me up and I seen her and I was terrified for her that she was going to step on a snake. I was like, you know, watch out, don't don't snap, step on one of these snakes. Mm -hmm. And Someone, I don't know who, threw a snake on me and I screamed and I woke up. Woke up. Mm. 
Well, snakes are almost always the devil, the enemy, mm -hmm. or attacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, because you were in a workplace, it would tend to make me think that it was attacks financially mm -hmm. that the, the enemy was saying to you. And the boss kind of t treating you like that, that's authority. Mm -hmm. So that's warning you of, of an authority that's not respecting you and honoring you mm -hmm. as they should. And, um, and then you step out and it just seems like there's one attack after the other, after the other. And then someone picking one up and throwing on you, that's a personal attack. Them around is just the world and the nonsense that we have to put up with. But putting that snake on you, mm -hmm. um, and because they, someone deliberately did it, it, it could very well be someone putting something on you, like accusing you of something, or um, physically abusing you, verbally abusing you, mm -hmm. uh, someone gossiping about you, something that's a direct to you. And because it wasn't just a snake crawling up on you, which could be sickness, disease, you know, this was someone who threw it at you. Mm -hmm. That was a warning of someone doing something to you, an attack, you know, mm -hmm. personally. And so when you have dreams like that, first of all, pray that they don't come to pass, that God will mm -hmm. help you pass them. And, and if they are going to come to pass, that you will recognize it. Because many times you, when you're in it, you'll remember this dream. So if you're in a situation, you're like, why is this happening to me? And you remember that dream, that's the, re that's the answer. Mm -hmm. And so then you go, oh, okay, he told me this was gonna happen, so I know it's going to happen, but because I, he's told me, I know that I'm gonna get through it, and I can pray against it, and I can pray through it. But he warns us of the danger and of the plan of the enemy. And sometimes we can pray against it and thwart the enemy's plans. And sometimes he just helps us get through the fire. You know, sometimes we're delivered from it, as Beth Moore says, and sometimes he delivers us through okay. the fire. So when you feel like everywhere I step, there's a snake, you know, something's happening. And now it's personal. Then you go, oh, this is that season that he warned me about. So I know that he's aware, and we know he is, but it's nice to know he is. And we know that God is aware, and we know that he's here, and this too shall pass. I'm over here, I get the giggles when you tell me these things, because I'm, after you say it, then I'm like, okay, so it makes more sense now. So that is really mind-blowing right now. <laughs> So this one, ooh, uh, it, it, it gets, every time I expose the dream, it keeps getting bigger. <laughs> that is so amazing. I'm on Dreamcatcher. We go to Elkton, Kentucky, where my guest is Pastor Lana Allen Shoulders. Pastor Lana is grieving the recent passing of her sister into eternity and she shares some dreams which really reveal her vulnerability. There's also dream selfies sent in by Alicia and by Shonda. So catch us here next time on Dreamcatcher and catch your dreams.